Spruce is significant because it's a nationally listed wetland and it's also an important water bird breeding habitat, particularly for pelicans. It's also an important part of the re-regulating of the Lachlan River system. It's 11% of the storage in the system, so it's important to the river overall. Lake Brewster does have water quality problems. It's a large shallow lake, most of it's less than three metres deep, so there were problems with blue-green algae there, problems with uh, water coming out poorer quality than when it went in, and that caused downstream uh, problems for people who were using it in their houses for bathing and drinking. New South Wales Office of Water had done studies into the water quality, identifying the causes of the problem and the extent. At the same time, there was community pressure to improve the water quality coming out of the lake, particularly for those domestic users downstream. It was also recognised at that stage that one of the solutions to poor water quality, if it couldn't be improved in any other way, was to simply take the lake offline, and that would be a loss to the community in terms of about $3 million a year of production that wasn't there, and a loss of reliability. As the drought set in and the lake started to dry down, the community saw that there was an opportunity to maybe do some work in the lake bed while it was dry. At the same time, quite a lot of work had been done on scoping studies, looking at options for improving Lake Brewster, both the water quality and the efficiency. And uh, then in 2006, there was an opportunity through the Water for the Future program to apply for some funding to undertake a project. The funding was approved in 2007 and the project got started. One benefit of the drought was that it enabled construction to go ahead without time delays and without extra costs. And uh, now that the project's been completed, we're looking for the three main outcomes, which are better quality water leaving the lake, improved environment within the lake itself, both in the wetlands and maintaining those bird breeding values, and improved water efficiency, reduced evaporation by being able to keep most of the water in one cell and being able to drain that cell fully. Lake Brewster and Lake Angelico are on route storages in the Lachlan system. Efficient and reliable and continued functioning of these lakes are critical to the Lachlan security of supplies. Water to the lakes comes from three sources. The first one is whenever there's water in the tributaries below Wangla Dam and if that flows are excess to environmental and extractive uh, demand then uh, that excess water is diverted into the lakes and uh, the second one is uh, whenever Wangla Dam spills uh, the excess water is diverted into the lakes and uh, the third way uh, the lakes get water is uh, whenever there is uh, rain rejections of irrigation orders those water uh, diverted into the lakes and uh, once the lakes uh, get the water whenever there is a demand downstream those demands are met from the lakes first before the water orders are passed on to Wangla Dam. Just under half of the 475,000 megs of general security licenses are in the lower Lachlan, below Lake Brewster, and uh, demand from those licenses are first met by Lake Brewster. So the Lake Brewster is very important part in uh, delivering water in the lower Lachlan for environmental purposes as well as irrigation, stock and domestic, and uh, for riparian requirements. The quality of water is, is a must for all of Australia. We've uh, got to a situation where we've got to be very conscious of the fact that we've got to do better with the amount of water that we've got. The importance of the Lake Brewster project to Hilston is immense. It's, it's guaranteed the Lower Lachlan water at times when we need it at the lower end. Given the choke on the river, around Condoblin where we can't get the volume of water through when it's needed, Brewster is opportune to uh, be able to top up the water that's needed by irrigators at the lower end of the river and for stock and domestic and for the environment. The first task was to divide the lake into two cells. The back southern cell, which is primarily a water storage area, was designed to reduce evaporation from the lake by storing water in the deeper part of the lake. This also reduces the resuspension of lake bed material from the impact of wave action. The location of the main dividing embankment was chosen to provide maximum water savings. The channel systems and associated regulators have been engineered to efficiently divert water into and out of the lake without any inactive storage. The main storage area, back cell, has a volume of 98,000 megalitres and 3,500 hectares in area. Total volume of the lake is 145,000 megalitres. The front northern cell was divided into the inflow and outflow wetlands and high ground. Water will only be stored in wet years in the high ground. 
The inflow wetland is 300 hectares in area and the larger outflow wetland is 780 hectares in area. Primary functions of the inflow wetland are 1. Filtering inflows 2. Providing seeds and wetland plant matter to repopulate the rest of the storage and 3. Provide refuge area for fish and water birds. The wetlands are designed to allow the flows through to have a retention time that allows the aquatic plants to filter nutrients and sediments from the water and improve the water quality of flows leaving the lake. The filtered water from the outflow wetland is returned back to the river for downstream use. The health of downstream river will be improved as a result of better quality water leaving the lake as well as filtered water carrying aquatic seeds and plant matter to the river. Economically the project was good to the community with local employees from you know, both towns, Hillston and Lake Angelico, uh, training and also the quarry which was the local supplier for the rock. In terms of the size of the project, we used 50,000 cubic metres of rock, uh, an estimation of 600,000 cubic metres of dirt and around 1,000 cubic metres of concrete. The regulators that have been put in place within the lake are now able to be operated remotely. Lake Bruce has been recognised as, as a major wetland uh, and this region has a major attraction to the local Aboriginal people because of the resources here as well but also significant meeting place for Aboriginal people to come which was located along trade routes for Aboriginal people as well so the exporting and importing of, of different resources from other areas would have been brought to this area at a ceremony during certain times. Due to the high significance of the location, uh, prior to any works done here, there was an uh, Aboriginal Culture Heritage Survey done at the location, which uh, seen the identification of over 3,000 Aboriginal sites. The sites range from burial sites through to stone artefacts, through to grinding and plates, and into uh, stone flakes, which represented knife cuttings and items like that that Aboriginal people would have used in this area. The role of the um, Aboriginal Steering Committee was to, to look at ways on how we can protect the culture heritage in the region and also develop management plans for ongoing management of these sites and this location in the future as well. There was an Aboriginal keeping place put aside so any artefacts that were found within the impact zone were actually transferred from the impact zone to the keeping place so with uh, GPS recording of, of that site, where it come from, uh, photo imagery of it as well so in the future if we ever want to drop it back to the, the identical location we can always put it back. There was uh, 1.2 million put into an Aboriginal employment strategy uh, which employed around 12 Aboriginal people to work on the site. The training that the, the guys actually got through the funding as well was conservation land management, Aboriginal site recognition and site management, but also the, the, the Aboriginal workers that were out here were actually involved in all of developing with the state water crew as well, so they, they took part in assisting with the, the development of the regulators and also the spillways. The Aboriginal people were involved from the start, so it gave them an opportunity to actually develop and plan on how state water and the Lachlan CMA could work closely in, in making sure that the culture heritage that was relevant to the site weren't destroyed or um, weren't removed, and if they had to be removed, at least Aboriginal people had a voice in where it could go to. Lake Bruce is recognised as a regionally significant wetland uh, and that's for a number of reasons. It's a really important migratory wader habitat and also provides a great habitat for pelican breeding and uh, also supports the threatened olive perchlet, a small native fish. Lake Brewster originally supported a lot of aquatic plants such as ribbonweed. In the 1970s this was replaced by blue-green algae which meant downstream users came out of the shower dirtier than what they went in. There's also a lot of pelicans breeding on the lake, which also reduce the water quality significantly. When you have 80,000 pelicans on a lake, it can really uh, get pretty smelly at times. The Lake Brewster Water Efficiency Project wasn't just about improving water efficiency. It was about making sure that the, the water that came in was the same as the water that came back out. Inflow and outflow wetlands were designed to reduce turbidity and take nutrients out of the water and also replace blue-green algae with aquatic plants. During the development of detailed designs, GHD and, and us uh, found that it's hard to understand how macrophytes will grow in this lake. Then uh, we got all of Jeff Sainty, who is a wetland specialist and uh, he helped us to create an environment where macrophytes will grow. That's how we come up with this configuration of the lake. 
on a long term average we can save 9000 megaliters of water per annum according to the modeling done by the office of water in terms of water delivery it takes about uh, one day from Wangla Dam to get the water to Kaura, about five days to Forbes, about 10 days to Kondoblin, and uh, 14 days to Lake Jellico, and about 18 days to Brewster Weir. The lower Lachlan is mainly supplied from Lake Brewster whenever there is water in Lake Brewster, and it takes about five days to get water from Lake Brewster to Hilston, and about 14 days to Mooligal, and about 25 days to Korong and 35 days to Oxley. The demand in Lower Lachlan mainly met by water from Lake Booster and if the Lake Booster is not functioning then it will take additional 18 days to get the water from uh, Wangla Dam. It was very important with this project to get the cooperation of various agencies. It wasn't just a case of building an engineering structure and the technical aspects of getting that working. It was a matter of getting cooperation in the environment, the community. The funding for the project was provided from three sources. The main funder was the Commonwealth Government through the Water Smart program. They contributed $7.5 million. The CMA contributed $2.5 million and irrigators through their irrigation charges to state water contributed another $2.5 million. And in particular I'd like to acknowledge the excellent work that Harry Arath did in building the project. He was around all aspects of it, not only the engineering side of it, but the environmental side of it, the people side of it, and also he was very much in front of all the requirements of the funding. In other words, Harry did a wonderful all-round job. It was a very challenging project and very satisfactory job because we have completed the work on time, within budget and within our means and to satisfy many of them. And that was a very, very happy outcome for all of us. One of the uh, benefits of uh, improved Lake Brewster uh, during March 2012 floods was uh, that we were able to uh, divert the peak floods into Lake Brewster and surcharge Lake Brewster and by doing so we were able to mitigate the floods to the downstream community. It's been a successful project. We were very fortunate, I think, that it fell shortly after construction was completed. But like any asset, it needs to be managed and it's a complex system requiring both land and water management. And it was recognised right from the start of the project that it needs to be managed adaptively to get the wetlands and the whole system working well. So that's happening now and State Water is now managing the project for the benefit of the whole valley. So we've got water quality benefits and we've got the whole valley benefiting from improved uh, reliability as a result of the project.